In this video, we will show you how to install a turnout decoder into a C-Track turnout. This video assumes that you already installed the turnout motors in your C-Track turnout. We showed how to do this in another video. The decoder that we will use is the 74461. There's also a 74465 and that decoder is specifically for the three-way turnout and can control two turnout motors. But for every normal turnout and a crossing, we'll use the 74461. The components are in a pink anti-static bag. Then you have your warranty and of course the instruction manual. And as with all projects, you should read the instruction manual before you start. We take the decoder and the wiring harnesses out of the anti-static bag. And if you have shag carpet or are in a very static environment, you want to make sure that you do not touch the uh, components on top of that circuit board. There's two sets of wires. One wire with white, uh, red and uh, blue is for regular DCC installation. We don't need that. We need the one with the brown, red and the yellow. The instruction booklet has a nice diagram that shows you how to hook up the yellow, red and brown wires. The yellow wire is a bit longer. It's for the power supply to the turnout motor and it goes to the little lip on the turnout branch. You can see that here on the bottom of the track. There's only one contact on the turnout branch of the turnout. The brown and the red go on the other branch, the straight branch, and you can see there are two contacts. The red one goes on the one that is connected to the center rail. And the brown one, as usual, goes to the one that is connected to the outer rails. You can see how I prefer to slide these on with the opening up. It allows for a little better contact that way. As you can see, the yellow and the red are both connected to the center rail. The red gets the digital signal from the center track and the yellow pulls the power from the center track. This gives you the option of disconnecting the yellow from the center track and connecting it to a separate power supply at a later stage. With the power wiring harness in place, we can install the decoder. The decoder itself has a wire harness with a green plug and the green plug is what plugs into the turnout motor. I didn't show this in the video but I pulled out the old wire, the yellow double blue that was connected to the control box. It's probably a little bit easier with tweezers but I'm trying to do it here just with my fingers. You can see there we go. In place. And as I said before, if you are in a static environment, you do not want to touch the circuit board like I am here. I'll put the power wire harness into the wide receiver plug. And if it doesn't go in, you need to flip the plug upside down and try it again. The circuit board aligns with three tiny little pins in the bottom of the C-Track. And it just clips in place. You can see here, there's one pin sticking through the circuit board, the second pin, and finally the third pin. And that's all that keeps it in place. Now it is time to set the address of the decoder. We'll grab the instruction booklet and look at the possible addresses. For this I'll use address number 7. And as you can see here on the list, we need to turn switches 1, 2 and 3 to the on position. So I grab the decoder and I slide position number 1 to on, which is up, 2 to on, and finally three to on. One, two, three are on, everything else is off. 
That's all it takes to set the address of the decoder. We connect the track to our central station and power up the central station. We'll go to keyboard. We'll hit the wrench. We get the blue black around, which is good. And remember, we set it to address number seven, so we'll hit the seven. Now we'll have to make some changes. First, the name. In this example, I'll name it Cross One. Capital C R O S S space One. I like it. Yes. So I hit the green check mark. And you can see the name changed to Cross One. It's not an old multi decoder. So I select the drop down box and change it to a new installation decoder. As you can tell, it now shows me actually what the coding switches need to be. One, two, and three up, everything else down. The protocol will leave it MM, Merkle Motorola. And the type, it's not standard. Let's see, standard red, standard green, uncoupler, right turnout, left turnout, right turnout, nope. Scroll down. Freeway turnout, double slip switch, that's the one. I selected, oops, I selected the one below, so let's go back. Double slip switch, there we go. That's what I want. Switching time, I'm going to leave alone. And now I need to upload this information. So I hit the blue arrow. It stands for upload. And there we go. It is now programmed into our central station. We can test it. And you should hear the uh, turn out click. So we like what we see. We hit the green check mark. And there at number seven, you see it, the central station just changed it to our crossing. We like it. We again hit the green check mark. And now we're back to our normal keyboard. And we can control the crossing. We hit control. And we're back to our normal screen. Now I'll show you a couple of little things. If we hit keyboard again and go to the wrench, the configuration screen, and it is blue. And if we would switch back now to our normal control panel, you can see that the keyboard tab is blue. It shows you that you are still in the configuration screen on the keyboard panel. There we go. Now if I want to change something on cross one, I can do that right here, back to the configuration screen, and I could, for example, rename it to cross seven. If I like it, I hit the check mark, I hit the blue upload button, and we're set. Hit the check mark and get out of the configuration screen. You see it changed to cross seven. If I want to delete it, I hit it again, and I hit the trash can. And as you see, it disappears from our keyboard. Back to control, keyboard tab is still blue because I'm in the configuration keyboard, so I hit the check mark. That gets me back to our normal keyboard. Number seven is gone. Hit control, and we're back to the beginning. We showed you how to install a Merklin decoder into C-Track, how to make the connections, how to set the address, and finally, how to program it and name it in the central station. If you have any questions, visit us online at www.ajckids.com or drop us an email.